Okay. All right, you ready for some FAQs? Yeah. I think we probably had them all. Um, okay. Well, let's take the first one. Volunteer? State the quadratic formula. Okay. Somebody state the rule. Ha ha ha. You thought it was going to be easy. All right. We're going to use complete rule. As complete as we can. If what? Uh, state the rule comprehensively. Let's use complete sentences and all that. <laughs> Raise a hand, raise a hand. Raise a hand, somebody. Take a shot. Okay, um, the rule is that if any painted surface is disturbed of, of more than six square feet interior and 20 square feet exterior, or any demolition of any surface, window replacement included, then the rule applies. For what? For target property. Target property, pre-78. That's very good, all right. This is effective April 22nd. All right, now, what, um, what exemptions or exceptions are there to the rule? Beg your pardon. What? I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon? Oh, the other rooms did not hear the rules? Okay, what is the rule? <clears throat> if work that disturbs painted surfaces is done on target property after or on or after April 22nd, or if any demolition, demolition of painted surfaces or any window replacement is done uh, on or after April 22nd for target property, it must be done according to the rule. Next question was, what exemptions or exceptions are there to the rule? And there are a bunch of them. Raise your hands one at a time. Not necessarily. Renovated properties, again, it could have been renovated, but they could have left lead paint that could still be subject to it. What's the basic, what's the biggest exemption? Owner-occupied owner property. We know that owner-occupied property is generally going to be exempt. Raise your hands. Yes. Tenant not compensated. Tested property. It's tested and shown not to have lead paint. How does the test have to be done? By a certified tester. Yes. Yes, uh, zero bedroom residences such as lofts or uh, studios or efficiencies, dormitories. Okay, what other kind of property besides, what is target property? Let's get to that one. One at a time, raise your hand. Yes. What, what was built before? This building was... Residential property built before 1978 and... Places, commercial properties where children Con congregate for certain minimum periods of time set out in the act, but for typically daycare centers, nursery schools, things like that, preschools, things like that, where children spend time such that if there were lead paint present, they could get it on their hands and ingest it. Okay? All right. Uh, what other exemptions are there besides this? What's the biggest exemption? Uh, owner occupied? Emergencies. Yes, emergencies. You don't have to apply, but what does apply to emergencies? You have to clean it up and test it according to the rule. Even though if there's an emergency, you don't have to do the demolition according to the rule. All right, what other exemptions are there? Yeah, the 78 rule, pre-78. What else? I'm sorry. Yeah, we're not clear. It's a little unclear about inherited property or property that you buy for your own use to flip. And we're still checking that. I've looked several places. I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and try to call somebody at EPA. Lord help me. <laughs> just, I don't have enough time to, to do that. I can't wait till I can hire an assistant who can... But I, my guess is that flipper properties are probably under the act. Inherited properties, properties are probably not. Fixing up your own property to sell, I'm, I'm virtually certain it's not. Question over here about if you have kids, are you under the rule even if you're doing your own property? I didn't think you were. I know what you're talking about. I have heard that, uh, that others believe differently, and I am going to confirm one way or the other what the rule is there. But I, I could not find the, anywhere in the rule that said that. Yes? Investment property that you rent out and own? Uh, you, you rent out and own a property. Is it under the act as far as tenants go? Yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, if the tenants, what about a tenant? What, uh, under what circumstances may, uh, is, is a tenant going to be subject to the act? A quid pro quo, compensation, a part of the lease, doing it in, in order to uh, get money back that they would otherwise not have gotten. Uh, I think we can safely assume that those acts are going to have to be done pursuant to the rule. Hotels are exempt, you said? Hotels are exempt, yes. Okay. Going back to the, the child under six, I, I, I could have sworn I saw something else about a woman, pregnant women. Yeah. Was, there was something about the homeowner occupied, it had to do with pregnant women and children under six. Well, I'm, I, I, I'll, I'm going to check this. Believe me, I am going to check this, and I will. I, there will be notices in everywhere I can to con, to try to uh, be clear about if you own a property, you got kids. But boy, I don't think they are. I don't think they're under it. It's probably a good idea for all the reasons that we have talked about. You want the house to be free of the lead paint that your kids could get into. But uh, as to whether you have to, I will let you know. Any other exemptions under the Act? Okay. Um, what if you, um, uh, let's see, what disclosures have to be made if you're going to be doing uh, this kind of work? What kind of notice do you have to give? You have to give written notice to tenants. You have to give the renovate right brochure. You have to rope it off or seal it off. As, I mean, you have to give, put up tape to let them know that it's going on and you, you're going to see signage and things like that. Okay, so you've got to let them know. And pamphlet. what the pamphlet, the renovate right, what, what, might, what does the tenant have the right to do um, uh, if the tenant wants? Yes, to insist that the certified renovator be present during all renovation, which is otherwise not required. The certified renovator must be present to see that all the procedures are put in place and to do the cleanup and testing, but not to do the painting and the sanding and all that, but has to train the people. But the tenant may insist that they be there. Yes. No. <laughs> Question is, can you charge the tenant? Nice try, but I don't think you can. Is the roping and sealing the uh, responsibility, or can it be transferred to the contractor? It's the contractor's responsibility. Yes, it's a responsibility of the certified renovator who's in charge of the project. And now, would they do that roping on a vacant property? I say roping, but no. It's does it have to be done on a vacant? I do not believe that these things have to be done on vacant property, the signage and so on. That's for occupied properties. Yes. I'm, I'm now going to need a cut man. <laughs> wow. Man, somebody want to pull that out? <laughs> The other room was asking me that I had said there was good news. Uh, did we miss that? <laughs> um, how do we prepare the surface? Yeah, before you sand, you wet it, you moisten it. HEPA, use a HEPA vac. What else do you do to prepare? You tape the floor down. You tape down the areas where the it's going to settle onto the floor. You tape that off with a fairly heavy tarp. What else do you do? You seal off the vents, and you're probably going to hang things over open doorways or keep doors closed. Okay. There you go. Wash your hands after you do this work. Absolutely. You're a she had a lot of kids. I know that. Uh, that's not a question that I have on my list. <laughs> question is, what a, what's a fallout on the form, the lead paint disclosure form? Well, you know, as we were saying, before it was rare that the seller would check, yes, I know whether there's lead paint, yes, I have a report or a test. That's going to become increasingly common, right. and that's really the only, and the only fallout. What are they going to have to provide to the buyer? Any tests or reports that you have in your possession? And you're going to be getting the results of these tests, and you're going to be getting reports. I'm almost certain the renovator has to provide the owner with reports. So you're going to have them. Um, let's see. What about painting over intact paint? Not a problem. 
Not a problem. It's disturbing the surface. How do you find a qualified contractor or certified renovator? www.epa.gov slash lead. And what do you want to be sure you check? Multi-state, not just Virginia. What are the penalties? <laughs> Don't call Lem Marshall. It's some wise guy over here someday. Seven thousand. Who was that? That was you, wasn't it? You look guilty when you. I just. Thirty-seven thousand per violation per day. Uh, revocation of your certification. We know that the states can handle the certification and take fees. We have citizen rights to uh, uh, rights causes of action. Um, Don't know. I don't know. The question is: there, Are there companies going out just to do certification and testing? I would imagine that there are going to be a fair. You're looking for a niche, aren't you? You betcha. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised to see any combination of the services that that are going to be available here spring up. 